What is up, friends and book babes? Welcome back to the channel and book miss. So I believe this is day 11 of book miss, which means tomorrow's the last day. That's kind of sad, to be honest. I, I like hanging out with y'all, but subscribe to the channel and we'll continue this little journey together. It just won't be every single day. I wanted to go through my five star reads of 2023 so far, at least. I wanted to go through that list with you guys and kind of recap on this year and the reading so i actually don't have too many five star reads my first five stars of 2023 was definitely before the coffee gets cold i love this so much that i bought the physical copy when i read this i read it on kindle unlimited first of all i think i actually have a vlog of it somewhere i absolutely loved this book i think the first part was a little draggy but ultimately this book made me cry even though it's not a sad book it's not a sad book but it still made me cry if you can get me to cry usually i'm gonna give you five stars i loved this book so much it actually makes me scared to read the other books in this series because i feel like it's gonna be a letdown and i've never really had a experience like that with a book avoiding reading more of the series because i feel like it's gonna be a letdown that's usually never happened to me before so that's interesting. This book is very popular, but if you don't know, this is basically about, it's magical realism, and it's about this cafe in Tokyo, I believe, where you have the opportunity to go back into the past and, like, do whatever you need to do in that past, but you have to come back before the coffee gets cold or you turn into a ghost. I totally recommend this book. It's so, it's not that long. I can't wait to have my own house and just like have it on my coffee table and stuff. So well-deserved first five stars of the year. I think like a week later, I was having a great January, but <laughs> a week later, I rated A Court of Mist and Fury five stars. This is the second book in the Akatar series. And um, the first book is so mediocre compared to this one i mean the series as a whole is kind of like like it's good but it's not the greatest thing ever especially when you read other stuff by sarah and like just other people <laughs> but this has my husband in it more therefore five stars i think the plot was better i think the a uh, slow burn of the romance was better and i'm not even a slow burn girly like that but for some reason with sarah j mass romance it needs to be slow burn for me to enjoy it because the second that they're actually together i start to get bored of them <laughs> so she really shines in slow burn i have to say and a court of mist and fury just had me live in my best life okay i thoroughly enjoyed this book out of the series and i did vlog reading this one if you do want to check that one out but yeah so this one was a five stars for me and then after that i have my first ever kennedy ryan read and it is before i let go i think i did a little vlog of this on tiktok not on youtube but i absolutely loved this book Okay, this was a great introduction to Kennedy Ryan. This is a second chance romance for a married couple that got divorced. And the there was trauma. There definitely was trauma with what happened to them. And so I was crying. I was rooting for them and all the things. Like everything you'd want in a second chance romance, this had for me and so i gave it five stars because i absolutely loved it i loved kennedy's writing i loved the plot well you know it's traumatic so i didn't love the plot but <laughs> it was just a well written story i think it also touches on mental health aspects and especially mental health in the space of being a black man too and what all that means and feels like. And so I just thoroughly enjoyed this book. I think it was written so well for the topic at hand. And I just, five stars all day, every day. Surprisingly, we have somewhat of a memoir, almost self-help book. And that is Remember Me Now. This was a five-star read for me as well. This is 
basically what this says right here a journey back to myself and a love letter to black women absolutely loved this if you are a poc woman in general you will probably relate to this book a lot it's pretty short i read it in like a day or two and i just felt so seen in this book and it was just so beneficial for me to have read this book which is why i gave it five stars it's by faith brooks and she's an activist i believe i think anyone that's not a person of color could probably benefit and learn a little bit and get like a little glimpse into what it's like being a woman of color but ultimately the people that really need that really should read this and will probably benefit the most from it is going to be uh women of color so i highly recommend for all of my sisters out there to read this book and then i have the poppy war by rf kwan this is the first in the poppy war trilogy that she has and i think it is this one maybe the dragon republic i'm not too sure but one of those is my favorite and i gave this one five stars and i didn't give dragon republic five stars so i can only assume that the person i was when i read this liked this one more <laughs> i just really enjoyed this book um i've said this on my tier ranking of series i've read and i'll say it again but if you cannot handle gruesome scenes then this trilogy is not going to be for you it really depicts the picture of what it's like to be in war and it's very gruesome it's very disturbing it's it's very real, you know, and so it's not going to be for everyone because it can be very gruesome and just probably not for everyone, you know, and that's okay. Basically, when this war orphan passes this certain test, she gets basically shipped to this academy for people that pass that certain test. Um, and the people that usually pass those certain tests are like the rich, like, people that are training to be a part of this academy and it's like a soldier type of academy and so since she's an orphan people are very surprised that she managed to ace the test in general proves that she passed this test fairly and gets shipped to the academy to train to be a soldier and stuff like that and in the midst of this the country starts a war <laughs> basically and so that's as much as i'll say about that one but I highly recommend it if you can handle gruesome things. I read this one via audiobook on Libby, and it's A Good Girl's Guide to Murder, the first one. I really enjoyed this book, at least through audio. I was listened to like 20% of it the first day, and then the next day I listened to the rest of it, and I just crocheted like <laughs> the day away. It was just a really, I just really was captivated by it. And I did low-key guess who it was but i still loved it i still loved the journey i still loved everything about it you know and i didn't guess like a second part of it like there's a second reveal and i didn't guess that so that's that was it's a ya mystery and it's basically following this girl poppy who decides to do her capstone project based off of a um i think it's a it was a closed case or something like that of the guy that was convicted of murder for one of her classmates and he also ended up the guy that was convicted i believe also ended up um being dying or something as well and so she decides to look into it more and finds that that may or may not be true you know all for a capstone project that's kind of wild <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of wild she's doing the fbi and police's job for a capstone project <laughs> it couldn't be me but it was really good i really enjoyed it the rest of the series i did not enjoy um but i really did like the first one <sighs> kingdom of ash this is the last book in the throne of glass series I read this. I read this. Not only this, the other like seven books that are like maybe this, this, this big. <laughs> like that's insane. But yeah, I I'm not gonna hold it because it's heavy, if you can imagine. <laughs> but I gave this one five stars. I think, I think overall it could have been shorter. But I think just the wrapping up of this series that took over my entire summer 
it was just so like bittersweet and i just i was so like I don't want to part from you guys like y'all are my family now <laughs> type of thing and so I just really enjoyed it I really did enjoy the last book a lot even though it took me like three months alone to read the last book <laughs> yeah I would highly recommend the Throne of Glass series if you liked the Avatar series at all Throne of Glass is the superior series but you do have to go through more hoopla I guess is the best way to describe it because with Avatar. The only one that you really kind of just have to push through is the first one, A Court of Thorns and Roses. And then after that, like the second book, I get five stars, you know. And so there's not as much hoopla. And there's only like five books out right now. And it's 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 not that difficult, you know. <laughs> but Throne a Glass, there's a prequel. There's uh, the first one. There's the second one. There's the, like There's like eight books. And then like for six and seven you need to tandem read them to enjoy it at all so there's like a lot of hoopla it's one and a half to two three books to really get invested in the story so that just is a lot more work so I understand your hesitance to it but I just say get over it (laughs) or find the audiobooks maybe if I had the audiobooks I probably would have finished it a lot faster but I highly do recommend that series it is the superior series in plot Akatar is more romance. Throne of Glass is more plot driven. Just so you're aware, in case you were really gunning for that romance. Like, there's romance in it, but not like Akatar level. The Ballad of Never After. This is the second book in the Once Upon a Broken Heart trilogy. I thoroughly enjoyed A Ballad of Never After, which is insane to me because I thought Once Upon a Broken Heart was mid. I thought it was so mid, and I was just like, why are the girls girl going feral over this? I don't understand. And then I got to The Ballad of Never After, and it was one of the best things I've ever read. <laughs> the progression was crazy. The plot was just better. The details of, like, what the world, what was going on in the world, like, what Jack's thing was like what he was doing tension between jackson and evangeline like just everything about it was so much better and well executed i highly enjoyed the second one especially because of the ending i think too like the ending really got me cr- going crazy that is the only book in this trilogy that i gave five stars so it's kind of like read at your own risk really because the third one was kind of a letdown i will say that and I think most people feel that way so I guess just proceed with caution I guess I don't really know and recently I did reread A Christmas Carol but I listened to it on audiobook and obviously that one's a five star that one is not only a classic in the genre but like literally a classic for the culture you know (laughs) like every sitcom ever when they have a christmas episode they do an episode that's like catered to a christmas carol you know (laughs) it has one of the most recognizable names for a character scrooge everyone knows what that means everyone knows who ebenezer scrooge is scrooge is he's an icon he's a legend he is the moment (laughs) i guess the 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 ghost of christmas past present future They are the it girls. (laughs) They are everything, you know? They moved the culture. I had to give it five stars, even though I didn't know what the hell they were saying half the time because the language of the 1800s. Still that girl, it's still that moment. It is always going to be a classic. And it will always define Christmas culture. Anyways, I actually read this book like three days ago, so (laughs) a very recent five-star read, and that is The Holly Dates. This is also a Christmas book, and I did do a 24 hours of only reading Christmas books, so this is on that video, but I thoroughly enjoyed this book. I've never enjoyed a holiday book this much in my life, to be honest. I want to read everything by this author now because of this book. 
it was amazing okay it was amazing it was less than 300 pages it's on kindle unlimited it was grumpy sunshine it was me ugly it was fake dating for like half a second it was funny it was traumatic (laughs) it was sad it was happy it was everything I could have ever wanted in a book in less than 300 pages Sarah Sarah I'm gonna need you to start taking notes anyways let me actually tell you what the freaking book is, is about. <laughs> but it's basically following, it's dual POV. It's following Holly and Kai. Holly is Holly Jolly. And she got left at the altar on Christmas Eve last year. So this year, she is going on a bunch of dates to try and find a person to go spend Christmas with back home because she got left at the altar at her hometown, which is small. So everyone knows the tea about that event. She's going on a lot of these dates and Kai is a restaurant owner. And so she goes to these dates at his restaurant because he decides to be her dating coach after he sees one of the dates and how terrible she is at dating. (laughs) And so he starts being her dating coach in the midst of all of this. But overall, this book was phenomenal. It is, I want to buy a physical copy. And I've said on multiple videos that I don't really like owning holiday books and I don't. But if it's five stars like this, I'm going to buy it because I want to reread it every single Christmas. <laughs> this one is also more holiday-esque. Like, it doesn't really it doesn't really give, like, Christmas vibes. So, also, if you don't really celebrate Christmas, this would probably still be a good one for you. The sun is ruining my life right now. But it was this was the last book I had to talk about. So, it's okay. So, I think the sun is telling me to wrap it up. Last Holiday which is my comfort movie during this time of year. If I haven't rewatched The Last Holiday like five times by mid-December, something's wrong, you know? I've only rewatched it twice (laughs) this year, so yeah. But it was, it's kind of like those vibes when it comes to like intensity of holiday-esque. There's not really much, so yeah. But the sun is telling me to get out of here. So I <laughs> am going to end the video here. That was the last book I've rated five stars so far. You guys definitely tell me down below what y'all's five star reads were this year and your opinions on the books I mentioned. Thank you guys so much for watching. A like and subscribe. Follow me on my socials and I will see you for the last day of Bookmas tomorrow.